Oh, if you're riding high off the back of X-Men 97, have I got some extraordinarily disappointing news for you. Let's get into it. That's right. We're going to talk a little bit about the X-Men live-action movie. We just finished reviewing X-Men 97, and we liked it. And I, 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 I posited the theory that X-Men 97 is a way to familiarize the audience with what direction they're going to go with the X-Men. You know, they want to connect it to the past show, and then they're going to move it forward, and then that way you're going to be used to it. Because, you know, I'm very, you know, I would say I'm very familiar, let's just say I'm very familiar with the um, Jim Lee era of the X-Men. I collected every single Jim Lee thing that he ever touched. I was an artist guy. If there was a specific artist that I liked, I was going to collect everything they ever touched, right? I didn't care as much about the writers because I was a dumb kid and I didn't know what I like pretty pictures and I like big booby ladies and I didn't know any better. So, and I, while I respect uh, Chris Claremont and all the great writing that he did, I don't know when he took over and, or, and I know Jim Lee doesn't write necessarily. So while he might've had some sort of creative input, um, my point here is They hired a writer for the live-action X-Men, and yet it doesn't look like a good idea here, folks. X-Men's new movie lands Hunger Games screenwriter, but not like the Hunger Games that you're used to. We're talking about the bomb, the Hunger Game Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Now, while I did not watch this movie... I have heard that it was not super functional as a movie. Why Are you hiring this guy because he just did a bomb and you can get him on the cheap? Is that what we're doing here? Is that, is that what Kevin Foggy seems to be a real fan of firing or firing, hiring very cheap writers who are not very good at these things? Why, oh why, would you hire this guy? It, it just doesn't make any sense. You want to know what else he wrote? He also wrote, and this is just bananas, he wrote Assassin's Creed the movie. You remember that with Michael Fassbender the movie? Or Michael Fassbender? You know what? I I don't remember that movie because I fell asleep during it. That movie sucks. (laughs) There's no two ways about it. It was one of the most boring action movies I've ever seen. I would never watch it again, and I don't recommend that anyone watches it again. And again, I never finished it because I don't know what happened because I fell asleep because it was that bad. And I don't fall asleep during movies. It's not a thing. I have reviewed thousands of movies, and this one got my goat and just made me fall asleep. I was like, I can't stay awake during this crap. It's just not going to work. So I am extremely confused why they did this. He's British-born. He He's... <laughs> Apparently, he's known for adapting Shakespeare Mac- Mac- Macbeth. All right. And that's where he connected with Michael Fassbender, apparently. where they And Marion Coltart, where they all worked on 2016's Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that is garbage. I would never... Any, no. Mm-mm. Not going to do it. He also did some film, a feature film of of Hamlet, which I don't know that ever got released. I'm definitely not excited. He, and and he's working on Now You See Me 3. Definitely not a movie I'm that interested in. Like, I watched Now You See Me, and I was like, oh, this is okay. Sure. And then there was a Now You See Me 2? I don't remember that. And so Now You See Me 3? Gonna say hard pass, dog hard pass and so i don't know what is going on here why you would hire this clown like no offense bro but you made me fall asleep in one of your movies gonna say the x-men's not for you and now and they keep writing oh the massive success of marvel's animated series x-men 97 was not only a big ratings hit on disney plus i don't know that i agree with that but carry some of the best reviews 
Yeah, granted, I said it was good. And I'm not going to you know, turn my back on that. But guess what? Um, DeMeo, who was the showrunner for that, actually cared about the show. I don't know that Leslie cares. He, a veteran scribe? He's turning into the industry's go-to scribe? In need of a pick? Really? Hunger Games bombed. I don't even know that there's going to be a sequel to that movie. They, from what I understand, they left it open to a sequel. And he's going... The long-awaited sequel to the Now You See Me franchise? All those people are old now. No one wants to watch it. Are you kidding me? Is this real? How is this real? This is... Marvel. Oh, they, uh, I, you're you're done. We've you've lost all respect. No one cares anymore. There, you cannot tell me that anyone is interested in this. If this guy's gonna write it, it's a five point six on IMDb, which is pretty generally like positive towards people. You have a six point seven on the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. This is a bad move, Marvel. No one's going to be excited. Now, don't get me wrong. Writers get canned all the time. But he's going to get he's gonna get paid. And then they're probably going to pass it off to another writer. We can re-look at this video you know, a year from now or a couple months from now. The movie's supposed to get started production in 2025. I think we're going to get like absolute garbage. And uh, if Marvel keeps force-feeding people garbage, there's not going to be... A Kevin Feige or Marvel anymore. I love the first 10 years, but the rest of it is absolute trash. And I've watched all of it. So let me know what you think in the comments below. I, you know, I, this is just one of those stories that popped up that I, I just had to react to because it makes me insane. I just want to see a good X Men story. I have yet to see one in live action. I am not necessarily a fan of any of the live action movies. You know, Days of Future Past was okay. But, like, get, you know, give me something better than that. I, I need better. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, catch our full-length audio podcast on iTunes. Catch our live stream, 7.30 p.m., Friday nights, Eastern Standard Time. Like and subscribe. We love all y'all. Thank you for watching this. Let me know what you think. And in the meantime, I am on to the next one.